Welcome to the ugly truth. Step one, train the people only to consume. Step two, infiltrate adults with the news. Step three, indoctrinate the children through the schools and the music and the apps on the phones that they use. Step four, separate the right from the left. Step five, separate the white from the black. Step six, separate the rich from the poor. Use religion and equality to separate them more. Step seven, fabricate a problem made a lie. Step eight, put it on the news every night. Step nine, when people start to fight and divide, take control. This is called situation. No design. They can't stop us, cause we're ready to fight, trying to brainwash us, but we won't let freedom die, the whole world's brainwashed. Everybody pick a team, start a riot in the streets, the whole world's brainwashed. It's us against them, it ain't you against me. We're with you, Tom. We will not back down. This is the ugly truth, hard to listen to but impossible to ignore. So tonight, I don't know how many people recognize that picture. Oh, I just looked at that. You do a great job with these pictures. These aren't just standard uh, graphics. She puts time and effort into putting these together. And look at that. I can I can see where that is. Where are the houses with the blue roofs? This, oh, there's one. This one didn't have many blue roofs. Available. Um, <laughs> was this in Maui? This was in Maui. Domestic terrorist attack is what we're calling this one. Yes, indeed. It's more Domestic than... means we inflicted it ourselves. This is a self-inflicted wound. I'm just going to come right out and say it. Whoops. Sorry about that. You said it. Can we rewind? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> this is serious business. The situation in Maui is a mystery. No, it's not. Not to the people with open eyes. Sorry, sorry. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> something, something about it just doesn't feel right. From the mysterious circumstances surrounding how the fire started to the peculiar reactions from officials before and after the fires, there's an unsettling feeling about the whole matter. There's ridiculous numbers of interviews, videos, testimonials, cries for help and personal statements that all kinds of evil stuff was going on yes so we're going to explore all of that tonight yes we've got to expose this expose the evil at all costs white hot maui fires fueled by chemtrail aerosols oh really really oh we I, i told you aluminum does not melt down in just a regular fire Glass does not melt in a regular fire. We looked at the temperatures, didn't we? Right. Oh, my goodness. Keep going. Oh, my God. If not a wildfire, then what was the fuel that flash lit the fires to burn across different mediums and materials? Okay. Like the cement street, the video that we saw last Mm -hmm. week where the fire was just flying across the cement road. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Ooh. James Grudvig, writing for American Media Periscope, says, What ignited the fires that burned metals and plastics, superheated CMU block and brick, melted windshields and wheel rim metal alloys, and fiberglass boats pulled out of the harbor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boats on the lake Yeah. started on fire. Yeah, and they weren't even near the, the land at the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. Get, right. Ugh. First answer is all geoengineering that has been taking place across Maui for at least a decade, turning the island skies from crystal blue to a few puffy clouds and rain every now and again. That haze we now know is composed of three main chemicals, barium, aluminum, and stronium, later being radioactive. By using ammonium nitrate as an oxygenating accelerant, the Maui fires were able to burn cars and steel while leaving trees alone. We've seen this in those fires in other states. Yes. Oh, there you go. Other apparent ingredients in the Maui fires is the ammonium nitrate. So oh, 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 don't, don't, don't. You mean the missing ammonium nitrate? That they, they had the chemical missing all, and now they sprayed it in the air. and in Several it. tons of which conveniently and mysteriously went missing off of a freight train in California are on you, May. Are you listening, Ms. Val? <laughs> Oh, I hope you're listening. Ammonium nitrate is the same stub- substance that was previously used in the 95 Oklahoma City bombing. Oh, shoot. I'm going to call her. This is a live show. As well as the 2011 blast in Oslo, Norway. Ammonium nitrate is also used to make car bombs. 
<laughs> so this is just one person's attempt at defining why the fires went so crazy. Yep. Okay. 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 Not right. it didn't even mention DEW in this one. Okay. <laughs> it was just about the chemtrails, uh, which is pick. conspiracy theory too. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, this is getting fun. Oh my god. Okay. So <laughs> next thing here, I'm going to play a little video here. Just. A little science video for you. Okay, a little factoid here. Here okay. we go. TikTok. All right, now let's get into it. We have all heard about the horrible tragedy unfolding in Hawaii right now. And regardless of what started the fire, there are real people that are actually suffering. And all of our thoughts and prayers need to be with them. But you all need to understand that what you're witnessing is not a wildfire. What you're witnessing is the biggest land grab of your lifetime. And I'm going to tell you why. Hours before the wildfire began, school was canceled. The water was turned off and the escape routes were blocked. All officials were off of the island when the fire occurred. Coincidence? Hmm, I don't think so. They didn't sound the alarms, nor did they use the phone alert system, which is insane for this day and age. Especially when you consider the fact that the Hawaiian island of Maui has the largest outdoor warning emergency system in the world. Yeah, in the world. And this thing has over 400 alarms on it. 400! But they didn't use it. Mind you that Maui is Hawaii's second largest island. And on Maui alone, they have 80 outdoor siren alarm systems. 80 on Maui alone. Yet they didn't use a single one of them. Plus, keep in mind that the system that they have on Maui is an all-hazard system, which means it can be used in all hazardous scenarios. All of them. They have different sirens, different sounds, for different hazardous scenarios. Now, each siren has a range of 3,400 feet, which is longer than 11 football fields put together. How are they gonna have the most advanced siren system in the world and not even freaking use it? Something smells fishy to me. That's just a big fucking oopsies, I guess, huh? And I know some of you want proof about the roads being barricaded and the water being off and none of the alarms going off. Don't worry, I got it. Just wait, watch this video and listen to what this old man has to say. But none of them were moving. And I walked all the way from Safeway to the chart house. Not one car had moved. And I was wondering what was stopping the traffic, but it was a policeman. And I got to the end and I looked up north, there was no obstructions, there was no reason to keep those cars there. Are you serious? I'm serious as a heart attack. And I, I said, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm under orders to keep them here. And I said, the fire is, is right around Safeway. It's going to hit Front Street. You know, these people got to get out of here. And he said, I'm following orders. No way. So, You're saying they were blockaded in by the police at the end of Front Street? Yeah. Like where that restaurant is? Where the chart house. Where the chart house was, I should right. say. They, there was a blockade there, and they could not go any. Right. I what the I, hell? I, I, I spoke with the fire chief, who confirms the sirens did not go off, and believe this, the fire hydrants actually ran out of water. How this happened is still unclear tonight. But what we do know, so many people had to self evacuate. And Mike, can you can you tell us what you experienced that night? Um, were there any warning sirens that you heard? Was there any evacuation order? None at all. Uh, no sirens. There are no text messages. There are no police firemen come by. The only reason I knew there was a fire because I saw people running for their life and you know in, in smoke. Um, even I turned on the radio after we got in the car. We didn't hear anything until 15 minutes later. And even the um, the, uh, the radio station we we're listening to was just evacuate. No direction. It's gonna. They're, they're basically had no information. It was a, a generic thing that came over the radio. Uh, but no, absolutely no warning at all. And I really felt like this could have been prevented. I mean, I can't even imagine. Can yeah, you? neither can I. Like, imagine being in their shoes. Imagine having your town and city on fire. The water's off and the streets are barricaded. Like, horrifying. Truly really horrifying. Now listen to this next clip. When Hawaiian officials are asked if they regret not sounding the alarms, they literally say, no, I don't regret it. I swear to God, watch. Do you regret not sounding the sirens? I, I do not. I do not. Like, oh my God, you should be ashamed of yourself. It's disgusting. Now let's get into what I think caused these fires in Hawaii. Have you ever heard of DO? Better known as directed energy weapons. Better known as lasers that come from planes to start fires. Supposedly this footage was captured right as the Hawaii fires started. Watch the video and let me know what you think. Okay, I paused this because I wanted to point this out. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at that. Do you see something coming down from the sky and then mm -hmm. starting a fire on the ground, electrical fires, mm -hmm. and then just bouncing around to different places? It yep. looks like a video game. Is this a video game that you got? It is not. This is, this is freaky. Continue watching this, and we'll talk about it a little more later.
whether that was real footage of what actually happened in Hawaii or not, we all know that directed energy weapons are a very real thing, as the military has admitted to them having this technology a few times. Now I want you to look at the aftermath footage captured by this drone. This is the aftermath of Hawaii after they put the fires out. All of that land back there that was burned, but all these million dollar homes are untouched. Convenient, huh? Or how the wildfire forgot to burn the wildlife. You know, that same thing that we saw in California a few years back. Keep watching. Some more million dollar homes that just conveniently didn't get burned that were right in their backyard and surrounding their home. Yeah, okay, I'm buying it. I forgot, the fire picks and chooses whose home to burn down. Oh my God, look at that bright red roof that's fine amongst all of the desolated homes around it. Man, I would love to find out who lives there. And yet another one just like shockingly stands out compared to its background. Uh, these last two I'm not even gonna circle because I don't need to, that obvious. Look, here's another one. Oh, those two neighbors were able to keep their houses. That's cute. And conveniently, now locals are all of a sudden getting offers for their burned down properties because that's what they wanted all along. They wanted the Hawaiian property, but they knew the locals would never sell. So they took matters into their own hands. At least that's my opinion. So that's why I said that what you're witnessing is not wildfires. What you're witnessing is the biggest land grab of your lifetime. Do you agree with me? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. I'm sure plenty of you have seen these videos that have been coming out of Maui of vehicles literally melting onto the street. These specifically are from Jeff Cygnus on TikTok. Like I said, the aluminum is literally melting out of the vehicles and the melting point for aluminum is 1220 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's just crazy because as you can see in this next video, none of the asphalt has melted along with this. And you would expect that to happen in fires that are reaching over 1220 degrees. And the melting point of asphalt is 343 degrees Fahrenheit. So make that make sense. Yeah, exactly. Make love, all of this make sense. I please. love science. I love science. This is the way you prove the corruption and the fraud is through, this, not by scientific theory, mm -hmm. but by scientific methodology that has no bias. Exactly. It's just numbers. Yes. Just look. Mm hmm It doesn't happen. Right. And it's I was telling you earlier. Go ahead. It's kind of like the towers that melted? or uh, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. But the steel stone. doesn't melt into molten steel. It doesn't explode and, yeah. and fall straight down. Yeah, onto and, itself. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. And like I was telling you, another thing in that Kawasaki fire in, in Oklahoma. Yes. In 1996, I think it was. I uh, I was a finance manager at a dealership, and our dealership burnt down, and my computer burnt up, and the, all the ATVs and the four wheelers, and all the boats, mm -hmm. everything, they were burnt up, and there was explosions in there because of the uh, fuel in some of the vehicles, and um, the computer was melted down. I interesting, <clears throat> it was the whole place was melted down. Yeah. Interestingly, I was able to smash the case open on my computer and grab the old hard drive out of there <clears throat> and then put it in another computer and actually it worked <laughs> so it was fire resistant and and it, it survived i was really right. impressed but the one thing that i noticed was the glass it was just like you know the uh, somewhat concave glass it was like right just kind it was of the older fall, monitor falling over on my desk yeah it was the old monitors right in mm -hmm. the 80s so it was or in the 90s and it was just falling over on my desk. Everything else was melted in the room, but that piece of glass was still standing there. Right. It didn't melt down. So a natural fire would not cause that to melt. No, no. Or aluminum. Yes, it, or, or aluminum, right. What yeah. was the aluminum point, 1,200 degrees? 12. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it ain't happening. Yeah. That no. doesn't happen uh -uh. with a natural fire. No, no. Right. All right. So um, human dilemma shared this video and he goes into quite a bit of depth so we're gonna watch this one now you won't believe it you just will not believe what i'm going to present to you in today's video when i discovered it my jaw dropped and to, to be honest I'm, I'm still in disbelief so whatever you do turn off all distractions and watch every second of this video because what you're going to see in here it's going to leave you in absolute disbelief. You ready? Let's go. It's not being reported right now in the news, but 
on a neighboring island of Lanai, they, they found 183 bodies washed ashore there. There's 800 as of today reported missing. There are many hundreds that are being refrigerated right now, trying to get ID. They're asking people on the island to provide their DNA so they can match DNA to others. Outside the media, they're expecting this to reach almost 2,000 people in death toll. This is right up there among the worst, if not the worst, since us becoming a nation as fires go. 85 paradise, and that was considered the worst. That was Pastor Jack Hibbs revealing shocking information that we don't hear on mainstream media regarding the terrible situation with the Maui fire. What is being reported on mainstream media is this. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, the team that's supposed to be digging through the ashes and delivering aid, has turned the tragedy into a junket. FEMA booked themselves in the five-star luxury Hawaiian resorts. They're shacking up at the Maui Four Seasons, beachfront, of course. Rooms there are $1,000 a night. It's not just the Four Seasons. FEMA agents are also posting up at the Fairmont, Kealani, and Maui, where rooms range there from $1,300 to $4,500 a night. FEMA agents are also crashing at the Gran Walia Astoria, five stars, of course. Are these the hotels Biden's FEMA officials should be staying in, gallivanting around in and drinking in, as search and rescue operations are underway with 500 kids still missing? Now, FEMA has confirmed that they're staying at these hotels. Biden is giving Maui fire victims $700 while his FEMA officials sleep at luxury resorts that cost more than that per night. FEMA officials could stay at the Days Inn where you could get an oceanfront view for 250 bucks a night. We confirmed it. Rooms are still available there. Now, when did FEMA develop this taste for the finer things in life? Because FEMA's administrator, Deanne Criswell, is complaining that they don't have enough money. We're watching our disaster relief fund very closely. Um, our estimates do still stay that we may um, have a depletion of our fund now. I mean, this is a day-by-day -day monitoring of the situation. Uh, we will start to move some of our recovery projects and delay them until the next fiscal year. Whoa, FEMA has a $25 billion budget. Please make it make sense. Maui fire victims get 700 bucks total to rebuild their lives. Meanwhile, FEMA officials get $1,300 per night in rooms at the Four Seasons, Fairmont Kealani, and the Grand Wailea in Maui. Nobody in Hawaii that's went through this tragedy should be worried about where they're staying. The president of the United States should have a gold card. He should be able to walk into a hotel, and plop it down on the counter, and go, how many rooms do you have tonight? Oh, we, and we need more rooms. Then you go over to the concierge and you go, hey, uh, in case you don't know me, I'm the president of the United States. And uh, do me a favor, call around town and let's get everybody uh, that needs a hotel room, a hotel room. And then you take these poor people uh, who need help and you put them in a hotel room. If we can do it for uh, people that break into our country, we can do it for people that uh, are in need. Uh, this shouldn't be hard to do. And th this should happen. Like in it, it should be instant. It should be the same day. Nobody should worry about that they have nowhere to go. Not in America. This is uh, disgusting. If you think that's the big news for today, well, I have information that, like I said, you won't believe. We've talked all week about Maui Police Chief John Pelletier. He's the guy who was in charge of the 2017 Las Vegas shooting that, to this day, still remains a mystery. Pelletier is the same dude who, on a previous video, we found out received a pay raise only 50 days after he started the job. $205,000 per year, which was a 29% raise. That was even more than he asked for. Okay, so we know who we're talking about, right? Now get this. The Maui Police Chief with the dark trail of contract controversy and bad luck around him is also the Maui coroner. I gotta tell you, I met with them. I'm also the coroner for those that don't know that. How convenient. Oh, but it gets worse. HB 869 was a bill that passed on January 23rd of this year, just one month after Josh Green took office. But what does HB 869 say? What does it do? Well, the very first section, section one states, the legislature finds that coroners should be separate from law enforcement and free to make independent judgments when investigating deaths. Wow, just wow. It also says under current state law, the chief of police for a county serves as the coroner if the county does not have a medical examiner. Making coroners independent from law enforcement will promote transparency, avoid conflicts of interest, and encourage more confidence in coroner's rulings. Remember, Maui police chief John Pelletier told reporters that the fire had melted metal, making the remains extremely difficult to identify. When we find these you know, our family and our friends. 
the remains we're finding is through a fire that melted metal. We have to do rapid DNA to identify them. With Pelletier both being in charge of the police department and in power of the investigations of the deaths, there certainly seems to be a sinister conflict of interest here. He knows exactly how many children are missing. After all, we're talking about families living in a small 5.7 square mile area. He can certainly figure out how many children were living in each home. Matt Wallace tweeted, What are the chances that the same guy would be chief of police in two completely different states for both the deadly mass shooting in U.S. history, Vegas shooting, and also the deadliest wildfire, Maui fires, in over 100 years in the U.S., with nearly 500 FEMA personnel on the ground in Maui, along with 270 Red Cross workers, 400 Hawaiian National Guard members, and close to 200 U.S. Army reservists, there is no way that they are still not aware of the numbers. No way. Will Kane provided his explanation as to the missing children reports, or or lack thereof. Lead to me. And this is what I've been told. The number's gonna be way higher. All of those guys said that reluctantly to me. They didn't wanna put numbers on it. They did see they saw many, many bodies. Now I want you to know that as well when I tell you this. There were a lot of children that were sent home from school that day. We need to find out what happened to all of those kids. I will say in all of my days over there this past week having talking to a lot of people, you don't hear people saying, I still can't find this person or I still can't find that person. There's not a great outcry of a missing child or a missing cousin. That does exist, but I'm just telling you, if the numbers are in the 500 to 1,000, I would have thought I would have heard that more. Mm. So that does leave me with one last potentiality, which is entire families are gone. Entire mm. groups of people who could not escape and no one left to say, where is my cousin, where is my uncle, where is my child? I, I do think, and I am concerned, it's going to be a story that gets worse before it ever looks better. It's tragic. Independent reporter Nick Sorter posted a very disturbing video along with his tweet that said, Maui police headlock me for asking the mayor about missing children. Mayor Bisson knows the answer, but he's hiding it. The mainstream media have been refusing to press the mayor on this, so residents and I started pressing him hard for the past several days. He's been demonizing and attempting to discredit me ever since. Regardless, we've been able to really blow the lid off this story. This is a cover-up. Children were burned alive. I've even heard horrific first-hand accounts from locals that found baby bones in car seats and bones of a young boy laying on top of his dog to protect it from the inferno. The four schools in Lahaina served over 3,000 students. Only 400 have enrolled in other schools. Another 200 are doing virtual learning. Where are the children, Mr. Mayor? So we're not going to ask we're not gonna ask that question. It's, uh... Many of these ten cadavers yeah. are. Oh. Who are they? The most important. Okay. The, the first show is over. Yeah. Right, so he's not gonna ask. He's not gonna answer he's my done. questions. Thank you. They take pictures of me. There's no need for hacking. You're you with Maui police, right? Yeah, he's done with the press conference. I appreciate your patience. Yeah. Get out of my way. Who are you? With the Maui police department. Okay, and what's my crime? You're literally pushing the me. The press conference is I over. I don't f***ing care if the press conference is over. Get out of the way. Sorry. All right, so it's our 110 cadavers, but we can't sir, give them we can't some room, identify. Yeah, we can't identify yeah, how many of them are children. This is get out of my fucking dude. Get off my throat. Relax, sir. Relax. No, I'm not gonna get. Relax. No, I'm not relax. gonna. Okay. I'm not gonna relax, dude. I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm trying to ask a fucking question. We can't get the answer for it. How many of the 110 dead are children? You know, you know who are children. They're cadavers. You have the bodies. You know how many of them are children. How many children are dead? Step back, please. How many children are dead, Mayor? So you're just, you're just not going to tell. Nick followed that up with another tweet saying, the morgues on Maui are full. The Hawaii government is still lying about the death count. I'm not backing down until the people of Maui have answers. Yeah, Sarah, absolutely. I, the, the, I, I know at this point that the government has not been truthful about the death toll. They're not talking about the death toll of the children either, which is one of the scariest parts of this entire thing. That is what the people here in Maui want to know. Now, when it comes to the morgues, there's one morgue 
here, one permanent morgue, and it's at the hospital here in Maui, the main hospital. They set up a temporary morgue at the police station. So there are not too many places that these bodies could be placed. I do know that the morgue's hospital is full and it holds several hundred people, okay? So I can't confirm that they died in the fire yet, but for whatever reason, the morgue is full and they had to set up a, a temporary one over at the police station as well. So they've now frozen this confirmed uh, dead number at 114. It has not risen here in the past two days. I can't tell you why though. Taking a look now, Maui water officials warn Lahaina and Kula residents not to drink running water because it may be contaminated even after boiling. They also warn to only take short showers in well-ventilated rooms to avoid possible chemical vapor exposure. And then there's the Maui fuel spill saga. The Air Force faced the repercussions of a 700 gallon fuel spill at a Space Force facility atop Haleakala. That's right, an oil spill on a volcano in the same area that was ablaze and devastated the island. Haleakala is a culturally and religiously significant site for native Hawaiians, and it's considered to be a dwelling for the gods and as a place where priests perform ceremonies. Space Force established its first regional command in Hawaii in November of 2022. Then, two months later, they apologized for spilling 700 gallons of diesel fuel on sacred ground at the Maui Space Surveillance Complex at the summit of Haleakala. Another instance of exactly why they should not have these facilities in Hawaii's most sacred spaces. We have a solemn responsibility to protect this sacred ground upon which we have the privilege to operate. And it is a privilege, not a right, said Brigadier General Anthony Masteler, commander of U.S. Space Forces Indo-Pacific. You expect more from us. And last week, we let you down. And for that, I'm truly sorry. We understand the importance of being good stewards of the environment. Masteler is new in Hawaii. He arrived in 2022. So let's get this straight. Police Chief Pelletier, new. Governor Josh Green, new. Space Force Commander, new. All three have terrible luck surrounding them. In the past, we saw jet fuel being spilled at Red Hill, the fire suppression spill at Red Hill. There was the coolant spill on Moana Kie, and a diesel spill on Maui. The wildfire in Maui ignited in the same area as the spill, which by the way, still was never completely cleaned up. As of six weeks ago, the spill was still not properly dealt with. So maybe this is all a conspiracy theory, right? Maybe what I just presented with actual facts, articles, and evidence isn't believable. Maybe the Maui fires were caused by climate change. Founder of The Weather Channel and meteorologist John Coleman says climate change is not happening. There is no global warming. Climate deniers, people who believe climate change is not happening in any meaningful way, are sometimes painted in the media as fringe characters, as kooks. So this might shock you. A man who co-founded The Weather Channel thinks climate change is a hoax. His name is John Coleman. Hello to all your viewers. I resent you calling me a denier. That is a, a word meant to put me down. I'm a skeptic about climate change, and I want to make it darn clear, Mr. Kenny's not a scientist. I am. He's the CEO of the Weather Channel now. I was the founder of the Weather Channel, not the co-founder. And I'm glad you did, because I am addicted to the Weather Channel. I watch a lot I'm of cable news. Now. Hold on just well, a minute. I'm not done. And... CNN has taken a very strong position on global warming that is that it is a consensus. Well, there is no consensus in science. Science isn't a vote. Science is about facts. And if you get down to the hard, cold facts, uh, there's no question about it. Climate change is not happening. There is no significant man-made global warming now. There hasn't been any in the past, and there's no reason to expect any in the future. There's a whole lot of baloney. And I regret it's become political instead of scientific, but the science is on my side. I don't think we're going to come to a conclusion about the topic right here. What I do wonder, well, I know though, is when not, you because see... Because you wouldn't allow it to happen on CNN, but I'm happy well, that I got on the air and got a chance to talk to your, uh, to your viewers. Hello, everybody. What there I is do... no global warming. So we're going to wrap up today's video right there. I have so much more that I'm working on behind the scenes, and I can't wait to bring it to you. If you'd like to see more updates like this, please give this video a like, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss any future updates. As always, I truly appreciate you taking the time to hear what I have to say, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.
Now, it seems that the officials are not only hiding the true death toll, but they're also being hush-hush about the missing children. So here's the twist in my report. After 10 days of devastating fire in Maui, the mayor, Richard Bisson, couldn't give an answer of how many kids are missing. What's honestly going on in Maui? And why is there no answers or accountability? We saw this one in that video that we just watched. That was a guy chasing him down. Right. Mm -hmm. Children are returning back to school, and there are reports of a lot of missing kids. These numbers are indeed alarming and should cause concern. Is there a logical explanation for this situation, or are these children truly missing? Only about 400 students from the Burn area have enrolled in other public schools, according to the state, while about 200 signed up for distance learning. The four schools in Lahaina serve more than 3,000. How many Maui kids are actually missing? Hmm. So we've got the actual numbers right here from Reuters. And here's the enrollment data. 3,001 students were enrolled as of August 8th. 538 have re-enrolled in other public schools and 438 have learned, have enrolled in distance learning. So those, are, those numbers have increased since that last report. So but just we're still, still, mm -hmm. still missing over 2,000 kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, another point. Did you know that the Hawaiian native people are the eighth most human trafficked population? Yes, we have to get into that topic. This is the ugly truth. Hard to listen to, but impossible to ignore. Right. So this guy has some really good points. So we're going to watch this video. I'm wondering if everyone in the cars had to get out and run, why aren't any of the doors open, right? It's a good question. So my neighbor actually was telling me in his office they have teams already over there. But my neighbor is also very aware of the corruption within the government that most people have no idea about. He's retired military. He still works with the government. He just knows they're full of shit. That's the truth. He even believes that that is proof that there was a direct energy weapon used. He said, bro, Kenny, how come they're stuck in the cars? He said, our teams are finding people in the cars, dead in their cars. This is what he's telling me. A lot of people might not know, I'm not that far from Maui. I came to Oahu to work on a project, Save the Children for the Child Trafficking. A lot of people don't know, the Hawaiian natives are the eighth most trafficked population. So we came to figure out how they're doing it, to add information to our website and to work on that particular part. So I'm here. That's why my neighbor has teams over there from his office. They're military. These are military people. He's just a civilian guy that's in charge because all of his clearances while he was military. He's a good guy and he literally believes this is proof that there was a direct energy weapon used. He said there's no way they should be out running. They should be on the side of the car. But no, something happened where it was instant. There was something fueling the fire. Yeah, there was fire, but there was something aiding it. A lot of people say it's not just direct energy. It was like almost like a microwave energy, a different form of direct energy. And that particular form would cause metal to melt. Just like if you put a spoon in your microwave. Because I'm telling you, once the car catches on fire a little bit, we're gone. Like all of us would be gone. We'd be dark now. What would prevent a carload of people from getting out? This question needs to be answered. If there's bodies in these cars, like my neighbor's telling me, how come they couldn't get out? Even if something did catch on fire, you should still have the time to get out and run. Why are they finding bodies in the cars? He told me this is why they're locking it down and they don't want people to see what's happening because people should not be in their cars. They should be out of their cars at least but in their cars so that might answer the question on why none of the doors are open it is crazy how you see cars melted down to the rim and literally i've seen one with pools of metal and then you'll see a car that's not that bad how's that happen if that's not some type of energy weapon none of this is normal guys and we need to question everything we need to stand together if you got courage let's go be the change you want to see clearly the world needs to see state nationals rock guys All right, so let's continue on that thread of the eighth most likely to be trafficked. I also saw this video from a girl who worked at a juice bar in Hawaiian Islands. 
sheds light on the sex trafficking, human trafficking aspect of the Hawaiian Islands. Hmm, let's take a look and see what she has to say here. It's because, yeah, it does make sense that they would try to turn the Hawaiian Islands into a Jeffrey Epstein Island. I'm going to share the story of what I went through with a girlfriend on Kauai when I was living on the island of Kauai in Hawaii. I worked as a server, well, cook, server, cashier. I was like multiple things at this job. At the Moloa Sunrise uh, Juice Bar in Moloa, Kauai, which is near Anahola. The boss who hired me there who owns that restaurant, the juice bar, is Jeff. Can't think of his last name right now, but I bet I could find it. Anyway, he owns Moa Sunrise Juice Bar, and Jeff is actually a part of a human trafficking, sex trafficking ring on the island of Kauai. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg is also a part of the same human trafficking, sex trafficking ring on Kauai, currently happening right now. Now, when I worked at the juice bar with my girlfriend, she was the manager at the time. I won't put her name on here because I know her story is very sensitive, so I'm just going to share what happened to her and exclude her name for her protection. She told me when I got hired on the job to watch out for Jeff. And she said, why? She said, if he ever asks you, asks you to come to his house for a paid massage, don't do it. She said, whatever you do, do not do it. It's not worth it. She's like, I would know. She told me this on my first day of training and I was really like confused, like, wait, what? Like, cause I was just like, I thought we're supposed to be training. I'm like, this has nothing to do with my training, but I could tell she was genuinely concerned about my well being and safety working at the juice shop. So I had to be curious about where was this information coming from? She later told me how she was a slave. She was a trafficking slave in the ring on Kauai and Jeff was the one abusing her. The reason how she got involved into the ring was because she's a massage therapist and so that's her job is giving massages. So when Jeff came to her at the smoothie shop telling her to come to his house to give him a paid massage, she just thought, oh, what a nice way to make extra money. I'll do it. Came to find out she unconsciously and un was unaware that she was getting pulled into a sex trafficking, human trafficking ring on Kauai. Jeff was only hiring young girls at the smoothie shop and that's why I got hired because I was like, you know, young, single, pretty female. All the girls that were there were young, single, pretty females, whether in high school, college, age, whatever, very young. Jeff would even tell us, oh, wear whatever you want. You can wear booty shorts, you can wear shorts, you can wear tank top, you can wear whatever you want here. He would literally say that you can wear tank top, you can wear shorts, like even if they're super short, it's okay. Like wear what you want. Like he was encouraging for us to show off our ass, our boobs, something very inappropriate to like tell your employees at a juice bar. Anyway, so back to my girlfriend, she got abused in this ring for years and she told me how she was scared for her life and she was doing everything she could to escape, but that no, there was nothing she could do to escape the ring living on the island because they were threatening her life and her safety and they knew where she was all the time because it's a small island. So all she could do was try to protect the girls at my job and anybody else who was affiliated with Jeff to try to keep all these women and young people and children away from him. It got so bad, her getting being a slave in the, on this human trafficking ring on Kauai that she fled the island to like, you know, set herself free and start a new life. But like, that was the only way, that was the only way for her to be set free of it all was to leave the island because they were trafficking her and threatening her life. This is on the island of Kauai. And sh she told me this story back in like 2016, okay? This has been going on for years, human trafficking on the islands, but especially it was going on on Kauai because of Mark Zuckerberg is one of the main people involved with this being a thing. The private beaches they own, this is where they transfer the women and the children on boat. The private beaches that nobody has access to except the people who own that property. And that's how they get away with it because nobody sees anything going on on the private beaches unless like you're on a boat or something or you're hiking somewhere that has a view but um yeah this is why i wanted to bring up my point about maui and lahaina 
because I know Mark Zuckerberg and Oprah have something to do with all these human trafficking rings going on on the Hawaiian Islands. Kauai was the first one I knew of, but now, Maui, Maui. I can't even tell you how many locals on Kauai back when I used to hitchhike because hitchhiking was a thing, you know, on the island and during that time too. I can't tell you how many people, any lo how many locals in Kanaka would tell me, please don't like do hitchhiking for the long term or you're going to get trafficked on this island. You're going to get kidnapped because they're like, we see it happen to so many women and like children going missing on this island. So they're like, they said, especially don't hitchhike at night. They would always, the locals would always tell me that don't hitchhike at night, try not to hitchhike, like, because everyone was aware of the fact that people were going missing. It's real. And they want to make the Hawaiian Islands like the Jeffrey Epstein Island. And that's why I'm speaking out about it, because it, it needs to be talked about. This needs to get blown up, like, now. Unbelievable, huh? No, it is believable. We've been saying this for years. Yes. It happens under your nose. Well, so I saw another video that uh, the lady was talking about the fact that um, it's questionable. Do you really think that they let told all the kids to go home and then let them all burn when they could be really good um, used in, in human trafficking if they were available and this is easily the snagged? This is the ugly truth, and the ugly truth of that is, truly, she was saying that why in the world would you let these children burn? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want these children. If you were wanting to kidnap children and turn the, the Hawaiian island into uh, the former Haiti, which that's what happened in Haiti. It was a trafficking operation. Yep. Every natural, 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 every natural disaster that happens like that creates homeless children and you know families are separated oh families are separated mm -hmm. oh that's how they get a lot of children is at the border that's mm -hmm. why the border's open they're getting the children <laughs> yep they're crying about the children being separated from their family but they're happy about that yes. so what she was saying is that don't you think that they would have gone in and just swooped those children up ahead of time so maui residents please lahaina if anybody has any video of a bus or vehicles that were stopping by just prior to everything breaking out and picking up children and taking them to a safe space. You know, if anybody has information like that, saw any vehicles in the area just before things broke out, please send us a video, put it online, put it on Twitter, put it out there on wherever you can, please. Yes. TikTok, whatever, whatever Rick Rock doing. So it's, it could be one of several instances, but we do know that they never let a bad situation go without using it to their fullest potential yeah eric holder said never let a disaster go to waste yep all right well i think that's the end of the ugly truth for tonight oh are you serious yes oh there's so much more to talk about with this issue we'll have to continue it at another time yes And thank you for listening to The Ugly Truth, because they can't stop us, cause we're ready to fight, trying to brainwash us, but we won't let freedom die, the whole world's brainwashed. Everybody pick a team, start a riot in the streets, the whole world's brainwashed. It's us against them, it ain't you against me. The Ugly Truth, hard to listen to but impossible to ignore.